All right, well, good morning again, Redeemer Bible Church. This is Jason Stinson, your worship pastor here at the church, and we are doing the Daily Word. We're in the book of First Thessalonians, and today we're looking at chapter 3. So uh, Paul here, after coming out of chapter 2, he was basically telling this church that he how much he was longing to be with them, but he was unable to be with them because of... Uh, of a lot of different reasons because of uh, things that we don't really know but he says that he, satan had hindered him from coming to see them but he longed to be with them so much and so it starts out here that basically he uh, says i longed to be with you so much but i couldn't be there and so i had uh, i had my brother timothy here that was doing ministry with me and i allowed myself to be alone and i sent timothy to go check on you since i couldn't go i sent timothy to go check on you and he goes and sends Timothy out to um, to see this church just to, uh, you know, because he couldn't bear being there. And he cared so much about their spiritual well-being. You know, Paul didn't care so much about, you know, worldly things in their lives. If their health was good or, you know, if they, you know, were doing well financially or any of those type of things. He cared about their spiritual well-being. So he sent Timothy to go check on that. And he was worried so verses one through um, five, Paul really is, he's worried that these people are going to hear of Paul's sufferings and maybe think that, you know, God's plan is uh, being thwarted or whatever because of that, or, or that, um, you know, Paul is discouraged because of these sufferings. But here he goes on and he tells them that to remember that he was destined to suffer, that this is all just part of God's plan, that in this world, in our flesh, that, um, you know, we must count on trouble in this world. So Paul reminds them of that just to, in case they were discouraged by it. So he says, you know, at, at verse 3, um, or right before that, you know, that, that Timothy came to establish and exhort you in your faith, that no one be moved by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are destined for this. So we are, as Christians, and Paul is reminding them that um, we will suffer. We will suffer for the gospel. We are destined for this. It doesn't mean that God is displeased with us when we suffer. It doesn't mean that somehow God's plan isn't working out. But uh, that's not the case at all. That we, as Christians, like the one that we serve, Jesus, are destined to suffer. So he just is reminding them of that and telling them not to worry or to be discouraged. And then um, in verses 6 through 10, he basically says, he shows that he's, he gets this report back that they're, uh, that they're doing well, that their faith is strong. And so he rejoices in that truth. So it goes on here, he says, but in verse 6, it says, But now that Timothy has come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith, and love and reported that you always remembered us kindly and longed to see us as we long to see you for this reason brothers in all our distress and affliction we have been comforted about you through your faith so if paul was worried in in chapter two that maybe some um false teachers had come in and maybe accused him of being a false teacher because he hadn't come to see them well now he gets this report that no they think very kindly of of paul and his ministry they don't have any ill thoughts and their their faith is actually strong and they're doing very well and so paul is just very thankful for that and then uh to end this chapter it's just a short chapter verses 11 through 13 paul has this prayer for his uh people so like other chapters paul always has this excellent way of ending all of his little uh, you know sections of these uh of these letters to these people and so he starts this prayer for them it's a prayer for these people who he hears about their faith being strong for their faith to continue to get stronger a call for them a prayer for them to continue in love and to continue um, the path of holiness and um, and for them to find their happiness in their holiness so he prays this for them he says uh, now may our God and father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus. 
with all his saints. So he says he's he's got this prayer that the Lord will open up a path for him to be able to come and spend time with the people here in this church, that he longs to see them. He's praying that the Lord will open up a path for that. And until that day comes, his prayer for them is to continue to uh, abound in love for one another. And his prayer for them also is for, um, for them to establish their hearts blameless in holiness before the Lord. And so that is um, his prayer to them. And I'm sure that is, is what we should be praying for one another as well. That each one of us would abound in love for one another and for all. And that our hearts would be blameless in holiness before our Lord Jesus Christ. So um, as we think about our day, as we think about this passage and we read over uh, chapter 3 more to ourselves, may it help us to abound in love and to increase our holiness for our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll see you tomorrow for uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4.